Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jonathan Hain. I'm one of the choral directors and organists in the Office of Campus Ministry uh, here at the University of Notre Dame. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you here uh, for this Mass. I wanted to uh, bring you uh, through a couple of things and just make a couple of quick announcements to help us pray together well. The first is that when you came in today, you should have gotten one of these programs. If you didn't uh, and you don't want to get out of your seat to go try to find one now, you can share with a neighbor if, uh, if you'd like, but I think everybody or most everybody should have gotten one of those. One of the things we like to talk about here, uh, especially in the Basilica, is that we pray with full heart and voice. And uh, we have with us today several of the campus uh, choirs um, over there um, to my right helping us um, to sing but the primary singers, the primary speakers, the primary doers of this liturgy are you, the assembly. So I'd encourage you to use this program, sing with full heart and voice at all times. Um, and in order to do that, um, I'm gonna actually do a little bit of a rehearsal with you. Uh, much of the music today is gonna be well familiar, things that you have sung before, but there's one thing that's gonna be new to everyone. So if you would grab your program, and turn it to page eight, right smack dab in the middle. During the preparation of the altar and gifts, uh, we're gonna be singing a really lovely piece called a, called a Repeating Alleluia by Calvin Hampton, so called because it's got this bit uh, that you see there printed in the middle of the page that you are gonna sing continually while the gifts and the altar are prepared. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sing it at you and then I'm gonna take you through it and we'll just learn it. It's extremely simple. Um, and I know that the students are mostly separated in the seating from uh, your parents and other loved ones. So we're gonna have a bit of a competition to see whether the students or the family members can participate better. So here we go. I'm just gonna sing it at you first. It sounds like this. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Super simple, right? So I'm going to sing a bit, and then you sing it back at me, like this. Alleluia. Your turn. Alleluia. Yeah, that sounds really good. When else do you get to sing with like 10,000 of your closest friends? All right, uh, my turn. Alleluia. Your turn. Alleluia. Good, my turn. Alleluia. Alleluia. Your turn and Alleluia. Alleluia. So now I'm going to uh, have us go all the way through. And maybe uh, JJ at the piano could play along with us like we'll be doing at the preparation. Here we go. One and two and go. Alleluia. 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 Yeah, that was pretty good. I think 10,000 people can sound louder than that. What do you think? Parents and family members, can you sing louder than the students this time? I want you to really put them to shame. Here we go. One and two and uh. Uh. Yeah. Alleluia. 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 And we'll do it one last time so we get a threefold repetition. So students, you think you can do better than your family members just did? Who's the best singing residence hall? All right, okay, all right. So maybe you could prove that to me right now. One and two and go. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks very much. I think we're ready to go. Thank you, Jonathan. And good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Purcell Pavilion. My name is Kate Barrett, and I am a member of the staff of Campus Ministry. On behalf of the University of Notre Dame and the Congregation of Holy Cross, it's a privilege and a joy to welcome you to this special Mass. As we welcome all of our newest students, we're grateful to be together and to pray for each of you. 
Before we begin, I have just a few announcements. If you are joining us from another Christian denomination or faith tradition, thank you for joining us today. We're honored by your presence with us. Since you will not be receiving communion, we invite you, if you wish, to come forward to a minister at communion time to receive a blessing. Please cross your arms over your chest and the minister will give you a blessing. One more note about communion. For those who will be receiving the Eucharist and who need a low gluten host, a priest will be here on the floor in front of the altar with low gluten hosts. Please just make your way down to the floor and you will find him here in front of the altar. Before we begin, let's just take a few moments to settle ourselves. And please enjoy the combined choirs singing the Pilgrim's Hymn. Thank you.
the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Welcome everyone to this uh, welcoming Mass. Uh, I know it's been a, a busy few days for you incoming students as well as you parents. Many new people, a lot of information, uh, a lot of excitement, but maybe a little anxiety too. I think it's good just to calm ourselves for a short time here at Mass, put ourselves in God's presence, offer up all our worries and any concerns to the Lord, and just spend an hour with, with God and with one another. And that's what we do at Mass. So let us begin just by quieting ourselves, uh, asking the Holy Spirit to be on our hearts, asking forgiveness for our sins, and asking the Lord to prepare our hearts for this Mass. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O oh God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, 
Hut and Ludd, Mosok, Tubal, and Javon, to the distant coastlands that have never heard of my fame or seen my glory, and they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries, to Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord. Just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels, some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. steadfast is his kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Lectura de la Carta a los Hebreos Hermanos, ya se han olvidado ustedes de la exhortación que Dios les dirigió, como a hijos diciendo, Hijo mío, no desprecies la corrección del Señor, ni te desanimes cuando te reprenda, porque el Señor corrige a los que ama y da azotes a sus hijos predilectos. Soporten, pues, la corrección, porque Dios los trata como a hijos. ¿Y qué padre hay que no corrija a sus hijos? Es cierto que de momento ninguna corrección nos causa alegría, sino más bien tristeza. Pero después produce en los, los que la recibieron frutos de paz y santidad. Por eso, robustezcan sus manos cansadas y sus rodillas vacilantes. Caminen por un camino plano para que el cojo ya no se trospiece, sino más bien se alivie. Palabra de Dios.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourself cast out. And people will come from the east and the west, and from the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Truth be told, before even opening my mouth, the hardest part of this homily is already finished. You might be asking why. It's because I net managed these stairs without doing an epic face plant. My name is Father Pete McCormick, and it is such an honor for me to be able to pray with all of you today. And so what I was hoping that we might do as we enter into this homily is to take a moment to place our feet on the ground to be reminded that we are in God's loving presence and to ask in a particular way for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so we pray. Gracious Lord, we gather this day a moment that is filled with so much excitement and so much that is unknown, so much that is hoped for and yet at this time mysterious. Lord, may this moment in time be for your greater glory. May through our reflection, the life of Jesus and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, may we seek to go forth into a world in need. 
We ask this through your holy name. Amen. Thank you so much. As I mentioned, my name is Father Pete McCormick, and it is my honor to be able to preach this Welcome Weekend Mass. I want to share a particular thought that I've had, and I'm hoping that I'm not alone on this. But if I am, I'm okay with it. Just don't tell me right away. So this is what happens to me whenever I'm in large groups or in moments of travel. Say, for instance, it's at an airport, or I might be sitting at an intersection, or it could be at a grocery store. Whatever the case might be, I begin to think about the people that are surrounding me. I begin to think about kind of how it is that all of us, given our different timetables and things of, to do, that we somehow randomly landed in this exact spot at the exact same time. It's something that's so marvelous to me. And I suppose on one hand you could say, hey, that's just coincidence. That's just how things play out. But yet, I like to push past that. And those of you who are thinking to yourself, you know, listen, this, this could be um, merely just kind of a crazy fascination of yours, Father Pete. I recognize that. But what, if you stay with me for just another moment, what I often think about is how it is that beyond the coincidence, we must recognize the very hand of God. We must recognize that in every precise moment of our lives, God is moving and acting. And so it's incumbent upon us then to recognize not only the moment that we're in, but also in recognizing it, seek to learn what we can from it. So often we can get caught up thinking about idle time. This is merely a distraction. I'm sitting at this red light, and, you know, if this red light would only then turn to green, I could actually get where I had planned to go. But what would it look like if you actually stopped, looked around, and saw what unique once-in-a-lifetime moment was actually playing out before your very eyes. It's with the eyes of curiosity that we're able to see such things. Now, I might add that without some context, without having kind of reflected as we have thus far on this, here is my one recommendation of things not to do when soaking in the once-in-a-lifetime encounter with whatever and whatever situation you find yourselves in. Do not, under any circumstances, stare. Because if you stare, they are not going to understand what you're doing. So my strong recommendation is just a casual glance and an appreciation for what you see before you. Why do I do this? And I think you're probably getting my point. I want you newest members of the Notre Dame family just for a moment to look around. Don't look at me. Look at your classmates. You don't need to lock into their eyes. This is a time to practice not staring. <laughs> On one hand, you could think to yourself, this is rather coincidental that all of us end up here in this precise moment. That the admissions office did an amazing job, which I believe that they do year in, year out. But what I want us to see and appreciate is, is that through the work of the admissions office, through the University of Notre Dame, through your personal desire, we now have what has now been constituted as this newest cohort this newest group of students in the Notre Dame family. And in my mind, what is most critical then to think about is this is not mere coincidence. There is something more and something greater at play here. That each of you has been called to this place and to this time. That each of you has something unique and distinctive to offer. In the good times and the bad, I need for you to remember that point. That this is beyond coincidence. That for us as those who commit ourselves to learning, to understanding the very presence of God, it's important for us to begin to be attentive to the moment, to appreciate what is before us, and to think, how might I use this for God's greater glory? You know, 
over the course of the years, I've had the privilege of being able to preach at this Mass. And it's been such an honor to be able to do so. I've loved it. But what I find year over year is that each time there is a new group of students who are committed in different ways. They come from different countries. They have different priorities, points of view, cultures. They seek to celebrate things and they have experienced life in a particular way that then allows them to make their own unique and distinctive impact on the university. Now is your time. Now is your time. Seize that moment. Recognize this is not just something you must do in order to get a full-time job. Recognize these years ahead as opportunities for you to not only grow as a human being, to take the time and the humility to grow, to expand your horizons, but frankly also to look around each and every moment, each moment that merely seems as if you are passing through or is merely coincidental, it's incumbent for us, it is a mandate for us to actually slow down and ask ourselves, what can be learned from this situation? What does God have in store for me now? You know, maybe a personal example might be helpful. In 2013, I had, um, in 2013, I concluded my time as rector of Keogh Hall. It was a great joy for me to serve in that capacity for those years. But as I was transitioning out of the role and into a new position here at the university, there was a group of rising juniors. These guys um, were, you know, your average, average people. Most of them were in Keogh Hall. Some of them were spread around campus. But what was really fascinating about that particular moment in time is, and we could not have anticipated, is what God had in store for them. After graduation in 2015, this group of friends ultimately went out into the world. They went into the finance, and they went into consulting, and they went into other kind of ministerial opportunities. But then one of them, the one who elected for the consulting route, the one who throughout his time in Keogh and his time on campus, had largely, when it came to faith, identified as agnostic. He began to reconsider, mostly prompted from the conversations he had had with his friends at Notre Dame, with his professors. And as he began to reconsider, he began to see other opportunities playing out before him. He began to think to himself, what would it look like if I helped others with this same journey that I've been on, to introduce them to the deep tradition of spirituality, to help provide access to prayer, to homilies, to devotions. What would it look like if I did something like that? So he began to call his Notre Dame friends, these people who were randomly assigned. And what they ultimately began to do is they took that expertise that they had acquired not only at Notre Dame, but in the working world, and they brought it together. Fast forward to today, this group of friends, this group of the graduating class, mostly of 2015, have established and started a company with an app that is now called Hallow. Hallow is available for download, and not only that, but for all of you as students, you have access to it. You can use that as part of your own experience here at Notre Dame as a way to help you grow and as a way to help you come to know who God is more fully. But beyond the benefit of being a Notre Dame student and being able to download the app, what I want you to hear in this is that this came as a result of these people recognizing the position and the situation that they were in. And it's my hope that in the very same way, you might do the same. This is your moment. This is the moment that allows you now to begin to craft and form the very understanding of who Notre Dame becomes. Jesus says in our gospel today, Jesus says, seek the narrow gate. In some translations, it is seek the narrow door. It is Jesus saying, don't merely breathe and call it a life. It is Jesus saying, strive greatly for what it is that you believe you've been called to. And of course that evolves and that changes and it comes through all different types of situations and circumstances. But Jesus says, strive greatly. Believe that there is something good 
worth fighting for. So in your years ahead, it's my hope and it's my prayer that if you fail, learn from it. If you succeed, help others with it. And if you are proposed something that you never thought about, but strangely find yourself attracted to, be curious. Continue to learn and to listen and to see this as something more than just the next opportunity. But instead, see this as God working through you. I'll close on this. Notre Dame was established with the belief that faith leads to understanding. That our desire to seek understanding through the lens of faith is most critical. The way that we go about this is actively engaging our minds. The way that we go about this is seeking to understand in all ways. Striving for greatness in that way. My hope is, is that while you are doing that learning, that you may also recognize that these gifts have been given to you by a God who loves you, by a God who gives them to you abundantly, so that in your own way and in your own time, whether it be an app, whether it be in business, whether it be as a priest or a religious, whatever the case might be, that you might use the gifts you have been given in glory to God. So may God bless you each and every day. Let us respond to hearing God's word preached by reciting the creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was carnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I can pass from baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come before the Lord in humility, asking that he might hear us as we offer our prayers for all those in need. For the church, may the Holy Spirit grant us strength and grace as we proclaim Christ's words of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. For the leaders of nations and governments, May God empower them as they work to promote and defend the sanctity and dignity of every human life. We pray to the Lord. For peace in our world, especially in Ukraine, may the Lord aid us in turning swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. We pray to the Lord. For the sick and suffering, may the Holy Spirit bring them consolation and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. For the University of Notre Dame, especially her students, faculty, staff, and administration, may Mary, Our Lady, always serve as a model of faith and service. Let us pray to the Lord. For our newest Notre Dame students, as they begin their time on campus this week, 
May their time here be full of God's blessings, and may the friendships built here sustain them throughout their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. For all our beloved dead, especially members of the Notre Dame family and the congregation of Holy Cross, may they experience eternal peace in the presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, we make these prayers in faith, seeking to respond to the invitation of your Son, our Savior, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Let us pray, sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, your praise and glory in his name. Amen. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we did not experience the daily effects, we not only experienced the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, 
and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world and to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For it is through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. now pray together in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And with Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
Let us pray. Complete within us, O oh Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. We'll be seated now for a few words from our head of campus ministry, Pete McCormick. Just when you thought you were rid of me, I'm back. My homily admittedly was largely addressed to the newest members of the Notre Dame family, our students. But I have a special homily, a homilette if you will, for the parents. And I'm going to cut to the chase and tell you where I'm going to get, and then I'll tell you a little bit more of a story about why this really makes good sense. This is the time in the welcome weekend where someone from the university has to stand up and say, parents, it's time to go home. <laughs> and I drew the unlucky straw here. I realize we've said welcome about 150 million times, but at this point, it's time to begin to think about heading home. And I know that this particular departure is difficult. You are so very proud of your son or daughter, and this is a moment that you have anticipated for some time. But let me tell you a story from my own life about why leaving soon might in fact be the best way to honor this amazing group of human beings that sit before us. I grew up in Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, and I'm the oldest of six kids. During college, I pretty much stayed close to home. I went to a different institution. And so ultimately, the time came for me to travel to South Bend, Indiana, and Grand Rapids is about two hours from South Bend. So I was about ready to make the trip, and I got there. And, you know, the same moment that you all are preparing to encounter was the one that I was worried about with some dread, if I must admit. I was nervous for a lot of th reasons, um, but most importantly, I had spent my whole life with my parents. I had spent my whole life with my siblings. And so I walked up to my mom and my dad, and my mom's always been the truth-sayer in our household. If you need to get it straight, go to Mom McCormick. She'll let you know. And so I said, Mom, I feel like I'm letting you and Dad down by entering the seminary and, and, and living here in South Bend. I don't see any Holy Cross parishes up in Grand Rapids. I, I think this is probably the closest that I'm going to ever get. And she looked at me for a moment, and she listened with empathy. And then she responded and said, Pete, I did not raise you to live in my basement. She said, I raised you so that you would be strong and independent and that you would take what myself and your father have given you and that you might bring it to the world. But then she went on to say something else. She said, Notre Dame has something to give you as well. Holy Cross has something to give you. And far be it from us to stand in their way. And so parents, on behalf of the university, I'd like to thank you. Thank you for raising such incredible people. Guardians, thank you for the mentorship and the love that you have offered to those in your care. The greatest act of love is to allow another person to go and experience the world, to take what you have taught them and to learn it for themselves. But I assure you of this, Notre Dame will care for these loved ones of yours and that you will be increasingly more so proud of the men and women that they become. And so this is what I'd like you all to do, students. And I know there's some of you up here as well. I'd like you to please, in a moment, please stand up and give an ovation to those who have been such incredible rocks and supports to you over the course of your time up until this point and certainly beyond it. So at this point, please stand and give these guys some love.
Okay, you can please be seated. I do have one closing announcement that is less sentimental, but I think could be a great source of support in the days, the weeks, and the years ahead. After the closing song, I invite each of you, our new students, to leave through the four exits at the four level corners. So here and here, here and here, okay? As you walk through those exits, students who are part of the St. Andre Welcoming Committee have a gift for you. Please accept our gift of a small rosary, which you can wear around your wrists as a reminder that you can pray anytime, anywhere, while you are here at Notre Dame. Again, students, please be sure to leave through one of these four exits to receive a rosary, meet your families outside of the Joyce Center. Let us stand. Please let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth and glorify the Lord with our lives.